one of the more challenging reporting situations that every FPNA person eventually faces is preparing a set of consolidated financial statements. Those can be for statutory reporting purposes, like following uh, your local regulations, but a lot of times they're also an internal group requirement. So for example, if you work in a company that's part of a larger group, it's pretty much a given that somewhere along the hierarchy, some entity is consolidating other entities. And uh, if you work for that entity, you might end up being involved in this process. Consolidating different businesses has one simple goal. Imagine a holding entity that owns five subsidiaries and maybe one of those subsidiaries has another two subsidiaries under it. The whole purpose of preparing a consolidated view of the financial statements is to show how the entire group's business operations would look if it was just one entity. So the main things to consider when we're consolidating is to eliminate all the relationships between those entities that participate in the group. I want to show you a simplified consolidation example in Excel that would really help you to grasp the whole idea and gain a better understanding of what the main consolidation adjustments usually look like. Let's open Excel and dive straight in. What I have here in this Excel file are three entities. So I have the holding entity and it's just a simple summary income statement and balance sheet and also some uh, balances and transactions with, between the related parties on the site. Typically, you have those uh, prepared in Excel with uh, mapping to a trial balance and I'm going to link a video on how to map a trial balance to prepare financial statements. But once you have the statement, you go into the accounting software and uh, export all the transactions between different related parties and uh, all the balances. And you have that also for the subsidiaries. Here I also have the income statement and the balance sheet for the two subsidiaries. And what I went and, uh, and checked here is uh, I wanted to make sure that those match or at least I'm getting the one that has the most elements in it. So I know that the holding entity has one additional line here, investments that uh, the subsidiaries don't have. So I started with this format and uh, I transferred it here. And uh, the idea here is that I'm going to grab the three entities, aggregate those amounts, so essentially sum them together, and then we'll make a few adjustments to make sure that we're not artificially inflating some of the numbers. So for example, if I have revenue, in subsidiary one from sales to subsidiary two that they then use as cost of sales. What I'll have is I'll remove this revenue and I'll remove the corresponding cost of sales. That way I'm gonna present the group, the three entities as if it was one entity. That's the whole purpose of uh, the consolidated financial state. Okay, enough uh, talking, let's go ahead and start linking this up. So. Here you have different options. You might directly link the cells and uh, I would usually do that when the formats are way too different to just use one of the formats. So for example, right now at work, I'm consolidating uh, one Bulgarian entity, one US entity and uh, one uh, German entity. So essentially I have three completely different sets of financials and uh, in order to be able to consolidate them I just prepared a summary financial statement structure and I'm directly linking what goes where. In this case here when they are so similar I we'll actually go ahead and use VLOOKUP. We're looking for the revenue line and uh, we're looking in the income statement. I'm only going to select the income statement here, fix it with F4. I want the second column for financial year 24 and uh, that's it. Then for subsidiary one, I'm going to do the same thing. Look up revenue and subsidiary one. I'm going to grab the income statement and I want the second column. And for subsidiary two, it's going to be a similar thing. Looking for revenue and subsidiary two's uh, income statement. Fix it with F4, the second column. And I forgot to fix those with F4 here. So let's go ahead and fix that. Now what I can do is I can start copy pasting those down. And here we have an error. And the reason for that is that this is other non-operating income. 
and in the subsidiaries I have other non-operating expenses. So to keep it simple, I'm just gonna say this equals subsidiary one, other non-operating income, and this equals subsidiary two, other non-operating uh, expenses. So now we have negative 585, is correct. For sub one, we have 22,000 uh, here. No, because uh, we didn't add uh, the taxes here. Okay, so now we have 22,021. Yep. And for the holding entity, negative 28, negative 28. Perfect. Let's move on to the balance sheet. So here we'll do a similar thing. Let's say VLOOKUP, cash and cash equivalents. Gonna come down here, grab only the balance sheet, sit with F4, and I want the second column. For sub one, the same thing. I'm gonna VLOOKUP, cash and cash equivalents. Come here, grab the balance sheet, fix it with F4, on the second column. And for sub two, gonna do the same thing. VLOOKUP, cash and cash equivalent, subsidiary two. Go down here, grab the balance sheet, fix it with F4, and I want the second column. And let's check this uh, negative cash balance. Yep, that's true. It's a negative cash balance. So this can either be uh, an overdraft on a credit card, or it can be some kind of a mistake or an error. In this case, I would assume that uh, it's just an overdraft on a credit card. And I know in most situations you would show credit cards on the liabilities side, but uh, it really depends on the regulation and on how you are presenting your financial statement. Keep in mind, those don't need to be public facing financial statements. Those may as well be internal management reports. And I've worked for a company where we showed uh, all the overdrafts as part of cash because uh, that's how the owner wanted to look at things and uh, be able to quickly tell if he's above zero or below zero. Moving on, we can just grab those, copy paste them on all lines, we get an error for investments there and that's to be expected because we don't have uh, any investments here. And uh, actually what I'll do is I'm gonna select all those just to make sure that uh, I don't have to deal with uh, errors and uh, I'm going to use my add-in here to wrap the cells in an if error formula. I'm going to say if error, just give me a zero, apply that. And now those are all wrapped up in an if error formula. You can do that manually just for those, or you can just delete them, leave them empty, whatever works uh, for you best. Let's quickly uh, check those. So the balance sheets match. I'm actually going to add... Uh, balance sheet check here, which is going to be assets minus equity and uh, liabilities. I'm just going to carry that all the way to the end and uh, format it as a number. We have some uh, rounding errors here, which is uh, fine. Uh, let's just wrap that in a custom formula. I'm going to say round and uh, going to append zero. Apply. So essentially, I'm rounding all those to zero digits after the decimal point. I know that uh, I don't care about rounding errors. Just want to see all those crisp dashes representing zeros telling me that my balance sheet zeros out. Okay, let's check the numbers 171651. Yep, here we have 15382 and 96, 15382, 96, Okay, if you've watched the channel before, you probably noticed that uh, I often use this Excel add-in to speed up some of the work that I do that's called Minty Tools. It's actually an add-in that I built. It's a collection of useful tools that I wish I'd had when I was starting my journey through FP&A and finance. If you want to take a look at it, you can do so on the first link in the description down below. I would love to hear your thoughts and teacher ideas that uh, I can implement in the future. And if you decide to purchase it, you'll be supporting me and the channel. And you should definitely use the promo code for 50% off. It's in the description box down below. Now back to our consolidation. So now the next step would be to go through all those uh, different uh, transactions and balances that we have as information for the relationships between, between those entities and essentially eliminate those. I'm going to start with the balance sheet. I always find it much easier to work with. So... 
first thing, uh, we need to eliminate the investments in related parties. And here, this will probably be really simple because uh, the equity capital, the share capital, actually matches the investments one to one, which is usually uh, what you'd have in a traditional uh, setting. So I'm going to say adjustment one will be net out investments. And I'm going to say here that I want to net this one out. And I'm going to net this one out as well. I'm going to do it in one adjustment. If it's a more complex consolidation, you might have all those in separate adjustments. And then in here on the asset side, just going to link to this one here. Remember, all those have to zero out. So essentially, each adjustment we do must not change the equilibrium we have between the assets and the liabilities and shareholders equity. Even if uh, something here, there's such adjustments sometimes where they only change on one side of the balance sheet, then we'll have another adjustment that would cover that on the other side of the balance sheet. Okay, we eliminated the investment. So now the idea here is that if we're looking at this as a single entity, it won't have any investments and it won't have any subsidiaries uh, share capital. It would only have the share capital, the equity capital of the holding company, and it wouldn't have invested into any uh, entity. Let's see what else do we have here. We have uh, some receivables from both uh, entities. So I'm going to go here and uh, going to look at uh, intercompany receivables, this number here, and uh, this is going to be my second adjustment. I don't know how I deleted this one okay and uh here it's gonna be intercompany receivables and uh we'll say i'm actually gonna link that to those here so i'm gonna say this one and minus this one and it's the same amount but i just want to link it there so it's uh, easier to trace and uh, i can see those same amounts here so I can say that this equals this. And now we don't have any intercompany payables or receivables because if the group would have been one entity, those wouldn't exist, essentially. Okay, nothing else here in the holding entity. Here, what we have, we have the payable to the related party that we just uh, adjusted for. And uh, we have the same thing for the second subsidiary. We also have a sale from subsidiary one to subsidiary two, but no balance which means that the sale was settled within the period and we have the same amount shown as a purchase from related parties and subsidiary two so now we'll go up to our uh, income statement and i'm actually gonna copy those up here i don't want to mix the numbering here so i'll have those adjustments be reserved for the balance sheet, even if there's nothing happening in the income statement. So our adjustment three will be intercompany sales. And I'm going to copy that down here as well for consistency. So essentially we have subsidiary one selling to subsidiary two. So we have to decrease this revenue here. Negative 31,000 and that's it. And uh, I can do the purchases in here as well, or I can do them separately and say intercompany purchases. We're gonna go to a uh, cost of sales and uh, I'll say minus this amount here, this uh, purchase from subsidiary one. And this is a really simple example where those match. So it's really easy to uh, eliminate, but if you uh, end up working on a more complex consolidation, especially if it's for like a published public facing financial statements and not for like an internal management report, then it uh, gets much uh, harder because uh, you have a lot of like, specifics that you need to be aware of. But uh, the good thing is that if you're working uh, for a company, you probably know the specifics of this company or you have access to the people who know that. Anyway, the only thing left to do is to paste that here for consistency. And uh, that's our consolidation, essentially. So in the general case, you would have like no change in like EBITDA, net earnings, things like that between the simple aggregation and the adjusted uh, consolidated figures. But what you have is a uh, decrease in different line items, for example, revenue. We decreased it and cost of sales we also decreased because if uh, those three companies were the same company those sales 
and the respective uh, cost of sales for the other company would have never happened. Consolidating financial statements is a huge part of the whole finance uh, function and uh, often it falls on the FP&A people in the company to deal with uh, those things, especially if it's an internal management reports consolidation that you prepare for the CEO or for the shareholders. Our example barely scratched the surface. In a lot of situations for a uh, management report, this would be a, a fine level of uh, consolidating, just a high level adjustments. But if you're doing a full consolidation following, for example, IFRS, it can get way more complex. Thankfully, there's a lot of information online about that, so you can easily find answers to your questions. It's kind of hard to cover like a more detailed uh, scenario of consolidation in a video because uh, it really depends on the entity, the, the local regulations, the uh, IFRS standards that apply to the different uh, things that, that need to be adjusted. So the whole purpose of this video was uh, just to show you the basic concept and uh, what we're trying to achieve by consolidating uh, financial statements. Now that you know how to consolidate financial statements, it's probably a good idea to learn how to map a trial balance so you can easily prepare those simple management reports, p and and a balance sheet really quickly in Excel. And I'm going to show you how to do that in this video up here. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in this video.